This is a Haskell 8-inch air drive hydraulic pump, model number 8HSFD-225. Like other models, it has an external cycling valve section here. This is identical to model GSF60 covered in the previous video. All maintenance and repair procedures are the same. Here is the flow tube and the pilot tube, and the pilot stems are located internally here and here. These are also identical to model GSF60. What is different is that this model features dual hydraulic sections, one on this end and one on the other. Both of these hydraulic sections are identical to each other. Here are the hydraulic inlets, and on the opposite side are the hydraulic outlets. The vent port for any leakage is located at the bottom of the end caps here. If you're experiencing leakage through this port, you should replace the seal package for the hydraulic section. The two hydraulic sections work independently of each other. Therefore, you may only need to replace the seals at one end and not the other. Pressure leakage through the mufflers indicates wear on the external cycling valve. The internal seals may need to be re-lubricated or possibly replaced. Here is one of the hydraulic section inlet check valve assemblies. To disassemble, first unscrew the outer bolt and pull out the internal parts. Use a pick or other long object to get all the parts out. The internal check valve parts include the large spring, cage, ring, inner spring, ball, and Teflon seat. The most common reason for leakage in this assembly is a worn Teflon seat. If this section has liquid leakage or lack of pressure, most likely you have a damaged Teflon seat. It will be included in your seal replacement kit. On the other side is the hydraulic outlet assembly. Unscrew the outer bolt to reveal the inner parts. The rest of the check valve parts of this section are located inside the outer bolt fitting. Here you can see the internal parts. Use a pick to remove all parts, including the large spring, cage, ring, inner spring, ball, and the Teflon seat. These parts are exactly the same as the internal check valve parts on the other side. To open the hydraulic end cap assembly, loosen the four tie rod nuts. Make sure when you reassemble this section, you refer to the instructions from your seal replacement kit. Now remove the end cap and pull out the hydraulic body from the piston rod to reveal the hydraulic section seal package. These parts should easily slide off of the piston rod. During a standard seal replacement, you will replace the seal and the O-ring from this section. These will be included in your seal replacement kit. You should also inspect the other parts for wear and order new parts separately if necessary. Both hydraulic check valve and cap assemblies are identical and require the same maintenance and reassembly procedures. When replacing the seal package, you should refer to the instructions for proper part number and replacement order. First begin by replacing the lower bearing, the spring, and the backup. Next, put together the O-ring, cup seal, and extrusion ring facing downward. Then place them into the hydraulic barrel. Now add the other bearing and the top wear ring. To disassemble the center air drive section, start by loosening the four air barrel tie rods and the flow tube and pilot tube connection bolts located here. Next, remove the remaining tie rods and bottom brackets. Now you can open up the air barrel section. It may be necessary to use a mallet to tap these pieces apart. Once open, you will reveal the inner plunger. This has an O-ring running around its outer diameter that will need to be replaced. Both of the end barrel end caps are also identical and have O-rings here where the barrel fits into the cap. And both have inner packings for the pilot stems located here. On 8-inch models, you also have additional seal packings located here in the center. Push these parts out by hand to inspect and replace any worn parts. During normal seal replacement, you will need to replace the O-ring and cup seal located on the center spacer piece. In order to access these parts, you will need to use ring pliers to remove the C-clip that holds these parts in place. Once these parts have been replaced, you can reinsert the spacer back into the end cap. 
The inner packings for the pilot stems are identical to the GSF-60 model. If you need to replace the pilot stems, refer to the other lesson for proper replacement procedure. Now let's move on to the air drive section piston plunger assembly. To remove the plunger assembly, push the plunger all the way into the remaining end cap and tap the barrel with a mallet until it is loose. Remove the air barrel and pull out the plunger. Normally, the only part you will need to replace on the plunger is the main O-ring on the outer diameter. This O-ring will be included in your seal replacement kit. If you're performing a full seal replacement for the entire pump, we suggest that you first replace and reassemble all parts on one end of the pump before reassembling the air drive section. This way, you can rebuild the air drive section on the reassembled end cap. To reassemble the air drive section, insert the plunger back into the assembled air drive end cap. Next, replace the air barrel. Tap it into place with a mallet to make sure it fits snugly. Follow these same procedures for the other end cap as well. Here we are going to reassemble the hydraulic inlet check valve. Begin by dropping in the inner spring. Next insert the cage and ring and drop in the small spring. Use a long object to make sure that all parts are centered and properly seated. Now drop in the ball followed by the Teflon seat and the metal seat. Make sure all parts remain in place as you screw in the bolt. Once assembled, use a long object to check the spring action of the ball. If the ball does not have a bounce, you need to recheck this assembly. Refer to your instructions for proper procedure. Flip the end cap over to reassemble the outlet check valve. Start by dropping the large spring into the bolt. Then insert the cage, outer ring, and the small spring. Now add the ball, followed by the Teflon seat and the metal seat. Invert the hydraulic end cap over the bolt assembly and screw it in. Now slide the reassembled hydraulic barrel back onto the air drive. Next, put on the reassembled hydraulic end cap and add the washers and nuts. Use the cross tightening method and tighten to torque specifications provided in your instructions. Now you can place this entire assembly back onto the open end of the air barrel. Tap with a mallet to assure a tight fit and reinsert the tie rods and brackets. Turn the unit back into an upright position and reinsert the pilot stems, flow tube, pilot tube, and the tube end cap. Make sure all tubes are properly aligned before tightening. There is no particular torque specification for these bolts, just make sure they're good and tight. Finally, replace the mufflers by screwing them back on. This completes the reassembly process for this Haskell 8-inch air drive hydraulic pump, model number 8HSFD-225.